In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant your faithful, we pray, Almighty God, the resolve to run forth to meet your Christ with righteous deeds at his coming, so that gathered at his right hand, they may be worthy to possess the heavenly kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. You, Lord, are our Father, our Redeemer. You are named forever. Why do you let us wander, O Lord, from your ways and harden our hearts so that we fear you not? Return for the sake of your servants, the tribes of your heritage. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down with the mountains quaking before you. While you wrought awesome deeds we could not hope for, such as they had not heard of from of old. No ear has ever heard, no eye ever seen any God but you doing such deeds for those who wait for him. Would that you might meet us doing right, that we were mindful of you in our ways. Behold, you are angry and we are sinful, All of us have become like unclean people. All our good deeds are like polluted rags. We have all withered like leaves, and our guilt carries us away like the wind. There is none who calls upon your name, who rouses himself to cling to you. For you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us up to our guilt. Yet, O Lord, You are our Father. We are the clay, and you the potter. We are all the work of your hands. 
the word of the Lord. Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face and we shall be saved. Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face and we shall be saved. O shepherd of Israel, hearken. From your throne upon the cherubim shine forth. Rouse your power and come to save us. Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face and we shall be saved. Once again, O Lord of hosts, look down from heaven and see. Take care of this vine and protect what your right hand has planted, the Son of Man whom you yourself made strong. Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face and we shall be saved. May your help be with the man of your right hand, with the Son of Man whom you yourself made strong. Then we will no more withdraw from you. Give us new life, and we will call upon your name. Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face, and we shall be saved. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always on your account for the grace of God bestowed on you in Christ Jesus, that in him you were enriched in every way with all discourse and all knowledge as the testimony to Christ was confirmed among you so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will keep you firm to the end, irreproachable on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, and by him you were called to fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus said to his disciples, Be watchful, be alert. You do not know when the time will come. It is like a man traveling abroad. He leaves home and places his servants in charge, each with his own work, and orders the gatekeeper to be on the watch. Watch, therefore. You do not know when the Lord of the house is coming whether in the evening or at midnight or at cockcrow or in the morning. May he not come suddenly and find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to all, watch. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The theme this first Sunday of Advent at the beginning of the liturgical year is watchfulness, a virtue that has been largely forgotten by our society and even among Christians. Jesus commands us, be watchful, be alert. You do not know when the time will come. May he not come suddenly and find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to all, watch. Watchfulness means, above all else, living fully in the present moment, loving fully in the present moment, in the here and now. I read somewhere recently about a man who purposely tried to exercise patience in a parking lot. He waited for pedestrians to cross at the Walmart entrance. He let people turn left in front of him. He probably let people cut him off. He let someone take a parking space he had spotted. And it was very hard for him to be patient, even for 10 minutes in a parking lot. 
It was an exercise in living on purpose rather than living according to habitual obliviousness to our passions and lack of virtue. Living life on purpose, being awake to life, demands continuous effort and prayer. It is not something that comes easy or all at once. It is a daily task that involves serious introspection, prayer, fasting, and repentance. Living life on purpose means being aware of other people, their faces, their body language, their clothing and mannerisms, their hopes and fears and desires, their sufferings and their joys. If I am to live life on purpose, I also have to grow in self-awareness, to be aware of my voice, my appearance, how I look at other people, my thoughts, the sensations of my body, my emotions, how I drive, how I walk, what I speak about, what I'm afraid of, my failures, the saint that I hope to become by the grace of God. Living in the present in full awareness of the moment before me is the kind of watchfulness that Jesus is commanding us to develop in cooperation with the grace of the Holy Spirit. The possibility to go through life on cruise control or on autopilot without being aware of what's happening within us and all around us is a very real temptation. As one theologian states, all too often we are scattered and dispersed, pulled and pushed in a million different directions. We are living not with alertness in the present, but with nostalgia in the past, or with misgiving and wishful thinking, or fear in the future. The key word here is today, not yesterday, not tomorrow, today. Now is the time to live by the grace of God, fully alive in the present moment, not in the past nor in the future. A Byzantine Catholic chant frames it this way, my soul, my soul, arise. Why are you sleeping? The end is drawing near and you will be confounded. Awake then and be watchful that Christ our God may spare you who is everywhere present and fills all things. And St. Irenaeus, one of the Church Fathers, tells us, the glory of God is the human person fully alive. The glory of God is the human person fully alive. Fully alive means fully awake, fully alert, attentive, vigilant. Developing a constant attitude of watchfulness means that we are striving to be present where we are, at this specific point in time, at this specific point in space, in the here and now. Advent is a season of prayer and watchful waiting. Jesus, who came among us at Christmas centuries ago, will return in glory at the end of time. And he is visiting us continuously unceasingly in everyday events and people. He's constantly coming to us in the events of life. But do we perceive his presence? Do we notice him? Do we recognize him? He comes to us in joy and in pain, in health and in sickness, in consolation and desolation. Each one of us, at a time known only to God, will be called to account for his or her life. We will be judged. So we must remain watchful and alert. Watching, as Pope Benedict XVI understood it, means following the Lord, choosing what Christ chose, loving what he loved, conforming one's life to his. Watching means passing every instant of our time in the sphere of his love without letting oneself be disheartened by the inevitable difficulties and problems of daily life. Watchfulness in our very fast-paced society, despite all the many stimuli that are constantly bombarding our senses, is still possible by the grace of God. This Advent, I challenge all of us, myself included, to put down our smartphones more often, to fast from technology, so that we can relearn and reappreciate the art of conversation, the messiness of human relationships, 
the value of silence. Allowing ourselves moments of boredom is something necessary. It's okay and very good to be bored at times. It's okay to be disconnected once in a while from the things that are happening on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook. We don't have to be plugged in 24-7. We need time to think and just to be. We struggle to pay attention to ourselves, and what suffers is our ability to pay attention to each other and, of course, to God. Let us remember that although Advent is indeed a joyful, cheerful season, it is also a somber and penitential season. Advent is meant to be a type of miniature Lent in which we embrace asceticism and self-denial in order to enter fully into the joys of Christmas. My fear is that sometimes we forget that, the penitential dimension of Advent. Let us resist the temptation to sneak chocolates here and there, the temptation to fully decorate our homes before Christmas arrives. Advent should color even the way we do Christmas shopping, not in consumerism and reckless hoarding or spending, but in simplicity, moderation, frugality. It's not the price or quantity of the gifts that determines their value. Rather, it is the love and intentionality with which they are given. As we begin this new liturgical year and the Advent season, we turn to the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth, the Spirit of love, imploring Him to make us ever more watchful and alert, able to live life on purpose in the present moment, to recognize Christ visiting us in all the events of daily life. May the outpouring of the Holy Spirit cleanse our hearts and make them fruitful by the inner sprinkling of His dew, enabling us to embrace silence and to fast from our mobile devices, filling us with the spirit of prayer and repentance. Jesus commands us, be watchful, be alert. You do not know when the time will come. May he not come suddenly and find you sleeping. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Beloved friends in Christ, let us now gather our petitions to the Lord, who comes to rule the earth and our hearts. For the Holy Catholic Church, built as a city with compact unity, that the Lord may grant peace within her walls, we pray to the Lord. For all of us gathered here, that we may cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light, we pray to the Lord. For the souls of the faithful departed, that the Son of Man may lead them into the glory of his heavenly kingdom, we pray to the Lord. For the members of our parish, that the advent of Christ may bestow on us the peace of his presence, we pray to the Lord. And we pray for the repose of the soul of Juan Gomez, for whom this Mass is being offered. We pray to the Lord. For all the souls in purgatory, that the dew of God's mercy and consolation may rest upon them. We pray to the Lord. Father of light, sanctify us in every way, so that our spirit, soul, and body may be kept sound and blameless at the coming of your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, we pray, O Lord, these offerings we make, gathered from among your gifts to us. And may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below gain for us the prize of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim.
the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May these mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray. For even now, as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what endures. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, thine eyes of mercy towards us. And after this, our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. Let us pray. O God, our refuge and our strength, look down in mercy upon thy people who cry to thee. And by the intercession of the glorious and immaculate Virgin Mary, Mother of God, of Saint Joseph, her spouse, of thy blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, and of all thy saints, do thou mercifully and graciously hear the prayers which we pour forth for the conversion of sinners and for the liberty and exaltation of our Holy Mother, the Church, through the same Christ, our Lord. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Most sacred heart of Jesus. Most sacred heart of Jesus. Most sacred heart of Jesus. Most 